Hello and welcome to csharpnerd.com. Uh, today I'm going to create a tutorial uh, for a user that is learning how to do a program in .NET. Um, his question was how do you populate a list box using a web service? So maybe for you it's easy but uh, for s on some different people it might be more difficult so today I'm gonna show you how to do that uh, what I have here is a basic web forms so you're gonna go to project and I'm gonna click ASP.NET web application click a name and click OK uh, that's the first step you need to do the next thing you need to do is since we are trying to use a web service what we're gonna do is right click on your project add new item uh, go to web on the left and scroll down to uh, web service dot ASMX and make sure you rename this usually what you need to do is you can say here uh, my service or anything else before service is optional but once you have the name click add and you're gonna have this file it's a template that you get from Visual Studio and what we're gonna do here we're not gonna touch none of this and by default you have a web method uh, hello world and it's very simple it just returns a string as you can see a string public string now the one we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna do the same thing but in this case we're gonna return a data table there's many things you can return but in this case we're gonna do a data table and here I'm just starting up my data table I'm gonna add two columns you can add as many as you need and my columns are gonna be really simple it's gonna be string type of string and here I'm just gonna populate uh, two rows so you can pretend that this is coming from your database and finally we're gonna return the data table back to the web service or the web method um, to test it out you can have open this file and click debug and as you can see it's right here ready to go so we got two methods we're gonna the hello world it just just returns uh, XML now we're gonna try the other one uh, user list and then we're gonna invoke um, it returns the schema by default as you can see and also the data so here is name is John email is John at abc.com and there's more and that's it now to use this or populate these fields into your list box that's the next step so I'm gonna close this guy I'm gonna stop debugging uh, close this file now we're gonna call this service that we have uh, to do that you, you need to call or you need to add a reference so you need to do a service reference uh, click advanced click add webs reference and here there's three options that Visual Studio is giving you uh, you can type it but the easiest way is just to click uh, web services in this solution so once you click that you'll get uh, your web services in this case I'm pretending that this is an LDAP service and that's the project and the URL so if you have multiple web services you it will be listed on this section so once you're ready just click on it and name it whatever you want and click add reference in my case I left it as localhost so I'm gonna leave it like that on your case click add reference I already did it so I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna click cancel and cancel here but once you have that done you have a new folder in your solution uh, web reference and whatever name you gave it is gonna show up so in my case it's localhost now how do I use it or how do I call this web services 
So now we're gonna go to our default page. Um, just drop a list box uh, from your toolkit or the control panel. Toolbox. Drop your list box onto the page. Then go to your uh, code, the code behind page file. And here we're gonna initialize the service that we uh, added to our solution. Now, how do you know what what you, what kind of object it is? So what you're gonna do is add a reference or add a namespace at the top. So you're gonna, it's gonna be using a web server list box. In that case, is the solution name uh, using uh, that's the project name dot and then localhost that's this name so if you did not name localhost make sure you change it if not it will show up right here localhost now you can also right click on localhost and view object in browser and then you can scroll down to the classes you have so as you can see there's event the one you care about is this one LDAP service. In our LDAP service, we have a user list, and that's returning a data table. So that's what we're doing here. Very simple. We're creating our our client, and then right here we're gonna say uh, service that user list, and it returns a data table. Now our list box requires that we set the text field, the data text field, and the data value field. And then you you data bind, you call data bind. Now if you don't set these two lines, you will not you're not gonna show and see anything on the list box. Now I'm calling the name, or that's what I want to bind it to. Now we're gonna run it so you can see what happens. As you can see, I got the list box and it's calling the web service and it's showing up as the name. Now, when you click on it, that's what the data field is for. Um, in your code, if you want to click go on another option here, when you click on the on the list box, that's where you're going to be naming name. Now, let's say you don't want name, then let's change this let's go back to the web service so you can see I'm calling name you can also change it to email you can set it like this and run it again now you get the email but let's say you have you need both you need name and email at the same time in your list box it's gonna pause or stop debugging and here we can um, you could add a, another row we could, we could create a, a column that combines both depending because the idea is that this is coming from your database so if you're using database you can I'm sure you can you, you're using SQL uh, this case I'm now I'm just hard coding this information here so I'm gonna say all of it all I'll just leave it like that but if you're using a uh, SQL it'd be better if you combine both in your sequence statement so you get everything at the same time so here what I'm gonna do is I'll just say John just keep it plain we'll get a space like that okay so now we're gonna bind it to all so copy and paste run it again now you have both combined so before you only had the name the email now we got both so the trick is that when you're calling 
your database or whatever source you have make sure you're creating the the full thing if you need it both together and remember that you need to add uh, an ID if you can because in your database each user might have a will, uh, will always have a different row ID in the table so hopefully this will help you bind your uh, list box like we have here to the web services that we're using on the back end using the web method uh, if you have any questions let me know on Facebook or on Twitter thank you for watching